Welcome back to the Amish Potato. I am CJ and today I have the opportunity to share with you a, a two-part interview I did with Lizzie Hirschberger. Lizzie Hirschberger is the author of Behind Blue Curtains. Um, she sh shares her story of growing up in a Schwartz and Schubert Amish community, experiencing sex abuse and um, all that. Sex abuse, although it happens everywhere, we're going to be talking about it specifically in the Amish community context, right? Um, they, because of the way they are, they appear peaceful and good. Um, it gets hidden a lot and not all of them experiences it, but some do. And, uh, you know, sex abuse is, is something that is very damaging to a person. It, um, it, it changes them and not in a good way. And it, and it's, it goes with them for the rest of their life. You know, if there's no healing found, uh, the healing is available. Healing is possible. It's just hard. It's such a hard, hard thing to, uh, revisit to, to find healing for, you know, I don't, I don't know that you could hurt a person worse than abusing someone sexually. I don't know. Maybe some might say murder, but I don't know that murder would be worse. I don't know. I haven't ever, experienced sex abuse personally, but to me, it seems like that might be the most horrifying thing that could happen. Um, so hopefully by doing these videos, uh, sharing as much as we can on it, bringing this evil into the light that it'll be exposed and, and hopefully be, uh, be a help to people who are in that, who have experienced that. So I guess we'll just get into the interview. Lizzie Hirschberger, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and uh, answering some of my questions and doing an interview with me. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, I did read your book. And, it, you know, growing up Amish in the community, I did. I, I was aware of a few um, sex abuse cases. Um, but after reading your book, I, I was blown away um, and shocked. And I started wondering, like, uh, I'm guessing a lot more was happening that I never knew about. So. Let's talk about your book. Your book is called uh, Behind the Blue Curtain. Um, and how, did you just recently release that? Yes, Behind Blue Curtains. I released it in March. And then it is um, published by Nasset Press. And then um, I did it with Molly um, Egan. Um, and she helped me. Basically, I tell people I have a unique story. But I needed somebody to put it in, in, an, in a fashion like that it's... Um, presentable and um, that it's interesting um, because some books, you know, lots of people have stories, but you need it in a certain way. And I'm not talented. I'm in that way to know how to, how to put it in. And I think they did a phenomenal job together, mm -hmm. putting it where it's interesting and um, also not um, graphic. That, that was my biggest thing. I didn't want it to be um, too graphic and I didn't want the book to be a book like it shows like it's a pity pity party book you know i mm -hmm. wanted to just show what happened to me but this is what i've overcome and this is you know where where i'm going uh-huh yeah so i when i was reading it i i don't know i read it a couple of weeks ago but i couldn't put it down it was you know it was very very in interesting uh -huh. uh, and eye-opening but so it's it's a book about your life as a schwarzentruber amish girl right and yeah. the sex abuse that happened and all everything that happened around that um I can't encourage you guys who are watching. I can't encourage you guys enough. Just go get it. It's on Amazon, right? And is that the best place to buy it? Or do you get more support if you, if it's purchased elsewhere? No, Amazon, um, you know, and it's in, in quite a few um, uh, local stores in Ohio. Ohio has two bookstores uh, in the Berlin and Fredericksburg area that are selling a lot of books. Um, mm -hmm. And there's local where I live local. But, you know, as far as for your viewers, most of them probably Amazon or they can send me a message and, and reach out and I will mail them. I can mail them. Okay. A copy too. I've done that, too. Um, so whichever way they would like. And then the other thing on Amazon, there's a Kindle version. So if somebody wants to do that, like the electronic version, mm -hmm. they cool. can have so that off there. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And that's, that's just an two awesome option. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. And that's just two ninety nine. So. Oh, so. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's. Really, my book, I would say, um, is the whole purpose is to get it out there and get um, 
create awareness and get people to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. And I do give 10% of all my, so book sales itself, the profit I give 10% back, goes back to um, whatever charity that I um, want. And mostly it's oh. to benefit, you know, Amish playing communities, like if a, if there's a school, you know, whatever um, I choose um, to give back. So if, so I love it if people buy the book, obviously, and yeah. there's more, more, profit that goes back to to give back that's that's awesome yeah it's yeah i'm i i didn't i kind of assumed that that's why it was written to expose and to show uh what's going on and i think it's really good what you are doing along with other women who have yeah. written books and who are coming forth so mm -hmm. but anyway so the swartz and Truber amish um i was raised amish but in a much less strict community, right? We were allowed to have a lot more than you guys were. Can you kind of explain what you were allowed to have? You know, were you allowed to have running water or toilets in the house? Like what, what did that look like as far as you growing up? So the Swartz and Trooper Amish that I come from is in southeastern Minnesota. And my, my grandpa started the community in 1974. So it's very conservative. Like I didn't even know there was any other um, Amish besides the Swartz and Trooper Amish that I was um, growing up in until I was older because there were no other Amish around. And that's just what I knew. So, so once, um, you know, once I knew there's other Amish, so that's also caused me to have more questions because for us, they just, <clears throat> Swartz and Trooper consider themselves to have the least. So they think um, the more you have to make yourself basically, um, uh, what would you say, the, the less you have, the more you're basically going to gain in heaven. So, so we did not have toilets. Um, we had outhouses. We had cold water um, that came, was piped into the house, but that was the only water. And we had you know, no electricity, no solar panels, no um, everything, kerosene uh, lamps and lanterns and um, flashlights we had, but not, um, there was no LED. Now they have LED flashlights that are much mm -hmm. brighter. So it was just kind of the, yeah, the old fashioned way. And we extremely strict. I mean, just, you had to go to church um, every other Sunday it was always in the church is always in the family's homes and it was a long service um it started at nine o'clock went until um it's noon around noon and then we ate soup um that we made we did not have um usually anything else it was homemade uh bread soup or bean soup you can call it bean really soup. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and ev and they would have a bowl <laughs> in the middle of the table and we would uh all in the on the table we would have a spoon and we would all eat out of the same bowl really um, mm -hmm. so i always just say because my you immunity, were, huh? just because you were poor or was it because that was just the that, tradition that, that was their rules that was their rules and it was um there definitely were some poor people but um i always just tell people that's why my immunity is so good <laughs> I, I ate yeah i mean and remember we didn't have refrigerators of any kind mm -hmm. we had um often had some in minnesota we have springs so that's like a small um area where it's really cold um so in the summertime we could keep our um products in there like in jars and things to keep it really cold and then in the we would in the winter time um do some ice um go out to the ponds and cut ice and then have an ice house but that only lasted for so long into the summer um but just yeah we just had um some people had more than others. Um, in my immediate family, um, the, I was the oldest of five children, and we did have a little bit more than some people. My, my dad had a sawmill mm -hmm. and also fixed engines, small engines for other people. And so we were very fortunate um, to have a little bit more. We always had plenty of food to eat. Now, I know of families that didn't. They, they didn't, and, um, you know, I was very aware of that, especially when I started working as a hired maid. Some people just didn't have a lot. They didn't have you know, they had a lot of kids sometimes and just not a lot of food. And so, so times were tough, especially back in the seventies and eighties. And, you know, eventually, um, a lot of the, the Amish families, um, got away from, um, milking cows and selling their milk. 
um, they um, started doing more like construction and working uh, off of the farm. And that seemed to help. I think that helped mm -hmm. with the money. So yeah, so most, very strict. Most of them, most of them were dairy farmers as mm -hmm. far as making a living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Milked the cows by hand. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, made your own, um, we all made our, all our own clothes. Um, uh, canned, um, you know, had huge gardens and, and so much of that I really appreciate it. You know, and I want to make sure people know that just because, um, you know, I, I suffered severe abuse growing up, it doesn't mean every family was like that. Um, mm -hmm. There are some wonderful families, wonderful um, Amish. There's just here and there, there's cases. And um, the reason that I really want people to be aware of it is because it's been getting swept under the rug for so many years. Um, like it's a generational thing on both mm -hmm. my mom and dad's side. Um, just it's been happening for years and years. And finally, I, I just, when it came to me, when I started having kids, I said, it will stop with me. I am going to do everything I can to protect my children. And and I did, it, you know, it, it was like, it has to, somebody has to st say stop. And it can't mm -hmm. just be, um, you know, saying, going in front of the church, let's say somebody, you know, um, got caught for doing something they shouldn't, like abusing somebody else or um, sexually abusing. They do the shunning for six weeks and then, you know, they let them go. Well, that's not, that's not sufficient. It, it's not mm -hmm it's not taking care of the problem, you know, it's just letting it go and pray, you know, praying, um, they encourage you, you know, to, it's going to go away, but it's not when you're, when you're a sexual predator, you need help, like mm -hmm. professional help. If the mm -hmm. church is not equipped to be able to just tell you shunning is going to take care of it, you have to get help. And there's help out there. There really is. Um, I just encourage people if, if they know, um, of somebody like, you know, if you know of it, report it and let the proper people take care of it. Like there's, it, it's ahead. law to report it, right? It has to be like, you can't hide it. Is that state law or is that federal or is that nationwide? I think that's nationwide, but, I would assume but so. yeah. And that's the problem where you have is people, uh, even though they knew it. And in my case, many, many adults knew it. And this is n Amish and non-Amish knew it. And they ref they just stayed out of it. Like they just left it. They didn't want anything to do with it. And I think that is just horrible. If, if you know of somebody that's, you know, somebody that's getting abused, you do something about it. Report mm -hmm. it to the correct. Sometimes it doesn't have to always be reported to the police. I'm not saying it always has to, but make sure that somebody with um, the right resources can help you and get the whoever it is that's suffering, get them proper help. Don't take them to one of these places that some of them go to that are not licensed and they do not have licensed uh, therapists and things in there. A lot of times it's run by plain people of some kind and mm -hmm. they often um, try to treat some of these and then they let them go back home and um, it's just not, you just make sure that you're at a, you know, there's plenty of facilities out there that are, have licensed therapists and psychiatrists and uh, yep. people that can help. And, you know, I think about how like my life could have been different if they would have done that at 14 when they found out. What if they would have taken me somewhere to, you know, get me the proper help? They took me to a clinic in South Dakota that is a massage place basically like a deep muscle tissue massage it was not a place they should have taken me and then they also made me think that I was crazy you know it was my fault and so it's just I just wish they would just um yeah treat it treat it the way they should you know to get your um, victims to the correct uh, resources and people can be her rehabilitated yeah, so it seems like it seems like a lot of places, even in our community, when somebody was different, and now I look back and it, they were probably dealing with something like that, they were labeled as crazy or mm -hmm. not, you know, or disobedient Mitch. or whatever. And they would send them to these places and put them on drugs or something mm -hmm. like that. And mm -hmm. and really all it was was probably pain that <laughs> mm -hmm. they didn't know how to deal with. Like you're saying, you mm -hmm. know, th those places aren't qualified to you know, and I remember like hearing of marriage problems or something and, and they were told to go to the bishop with marriage problems. And it's like the, the bishop is not even close to qualified to even start 
with me. You know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. they, yeah. they're just, they don't know what they're doing. They mm-hmm. don't know how to handle yeah. it. They, mm-hmm. they're so uneducated and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't even have like the Christian knowledge of, you know, like now in the Christian world, we share with each other our problems, what we went mm-hmm. through and it, and it helps everybody else, you know, but they don't really even have that. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause, because once you have it, you've given it to the the bishop or the preachers, then, you know, they deal with it and then you're never supposed to talk about it again. You mm-hmm. know, then it's just so, so hidden. And uh, sometimes, yes, it's, it's like you said, marriage problems or some of those. And it often, I just feel like often it, it tends to be the woman's, um, the woman's fault. You know, it, it gets mm-hmm. pushed on her. And I think it's very unfortunate. Um, sometimes it is not, um, you know, it's, it, it just isn't. It is sometimes the guy needs, to, you know, the husband yep. needs help. Yep. That's so. Let's get in. So you were a maid, a mot, mm-hmm. um, when it all started, and then, and and the shock is so horrible. Like it's so shocking to me. But you were blamed for it. Like this was your fault. And you know, you were fourteen, and the guy was married, and it yeah, it just is so crazy. But. It almost seems like that would have been worse, taking the blame than the actual, like. <laughs> yeah, somebody is. Maybe, you don't have to share if you don't want. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, no. So that question has come up to me before, and I said it was horrible, and I think the most devastating thing to me was, I think that that people all around me were talking because he had went to the church and confessed something. I don't know what he confessed, but he went and confessed that he did something wrong and um, he got shunned. So then people are talking all around me, but nobody's talking to me. Do you know what I mean? Like they're all just whispering, mm-hmm. like, and just, um, you know, where I felt, yeah, I, I felt just so isolated and so alone and so, um, yeah, nobody believed me. And, and I will tell you in, in our sports and tribute community, um, you cannot, you're not considered basically an adult until you're 21. And uh, so you have to give, if you work somewhere, you have to give your parents the money until you're 21. So to me, that is absolutely appalling. Were they, how can they blame me at 14 when I was not an adult? Mm-hmm. And they blame me for enticing him, to, you know, that I brought it on myself. I mean, it's just, to me, it's ludicrous. How mm-hmm. can you come up with that plan that, that this is my fault? And I think when you want to go... Um, on the guy's part, well, what are you saying about the guy? He's 28 years old and married and he can't um, resist a 14 year old child. You know, what are you saying about him then? What is his responsibility? Yeah, that's, it's sickening. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I will say even to this day, you know, there's still people that still, um, still blame me um, for it. And, and it was, it's, to me, I just tell those people, go um, educate yourself. Um, go find out what the rules are for a 14-year-old. And every state is obviously different. But go go educate yourself a little bit and, and read up on what it means. At 14, you are not old enough to consent. Like, that. Yeah. there is no other way around it. You can't consent at 14. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, every state is different. But um, And then blaming me for it is just, I think it was just the easy way out. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it was an excuse for him for what mm-hmm. he did. Yeah, for sure. I would say, um, yeah, what a cop out though. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I just can't imagine. Yeah. Cause I know like the, the, the Amish communities, maybe yours was, I don't think, I doubt it. Yours was different, but like it, it's everybody, everybody knows everybody and it's just <laughs> talking and gossip. And it's, it's gossip. like, you know, we would ask a girl out for a date Saturday night and Monday morning we'd walk through those doors at work and everybody knew. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they don't, you know, without all the technology. Mm-hmm. So, which mm-hmm. that, you know, was nothing to deal with, but, mm-hmm. but everything but, else, like everybody knows when somebody's having problems and it, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's miscommunicated a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot because so, they didn't talk. Yeah. They don't talk. They just yeah. often gossip. And, and that is and one judge. Of, yeah. yeah. Mm, judge. Judge. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So that's why I really felt, you know, like compelled to after um, I sort of came forward and reported my case and, and to come forward with my book is that is that I really felt like I get to say my side of the story. Mm-hmm. And people always say, you know, 
there was two people. So we two people know what happened. But what I felt is that his version was the only one that people ever heard. And I've had so many people that I grew up with now read the book and they're like, oh, now I totally understand it. Like we always heard the rumors, you know, we, we would hear things, but we didn't know the whole thing. And so they're just, I've gotten so many great, um, mm -hmm. great comments back saying they're so glad that I did it. And now they know the rest of the story. Yep. Yeah, I could, when I was reading the book, I could see, I could tell, like, I mean, I could know how that would, uh, how other people would be, if being told a lie, they they could believe it, right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. so many things that I believed <laughs> that yeah. were false, you know, maybe not mm -hmm. something, you know, no, not about sex abuse or anything, mm -hmm. but other things, it's like that we believed about other people that just weren't true. And, yeah. and it's, it happened to me too, somewhat, but, mm -hmm. um, and it's but very yeah. devastating on your character when people d believe things without, you know what I mean? When it, mm -hmm. when it's just so far off from the truth, it really does affect you. It really does. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like, and then, so I try to make sure that I, um, you know, if, if you hear something about somebody else, you go directly to them, the source. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions, you don't just believe like hearsay. Um, yeah. And that is one thing about my book is that um, some people are like, well, you can put anything you want in a book. I could, but remember, I have a publisher and I have um, had editors. I had to submit. I couldn't just like write anything. I had to like submit documents and things, you know, and I have my diary mm -hmm. and my journal. So they had to go in and verify it because this is, uh, this is their um, basically their art, they call it like they have to have that backing too. They can't just publish mm -hmm. anything, you know, and just say, okay, here's a book. They, I had to submit so much stuff. And I tried to put a lot of the, uh, you know, when I use some of the pictures, like the document, um, mm -hmm. of, of the DNA test with my dad and, you know, different things that I really tried to put in there. So people can still say it's not true. Um, but I have submitted everything and it is done as truthful as I could. I mean, that that's, you know what I mean? It, from 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 everything that we had to go by yeah you know, you know i spend a lot of time with when my dad was um he passed away a couple of years ago and when he was really sick i took i took him to appointments and stuff and i spent a lot of time with him then um because at that time i knew i wanted to start writing a book and i asked him the questions you know what i mean like all those mm -hmm. things about when, when we first moved to minnesota and you know different things so i got it from him and he was a great storyteller oh my goodness so he loved mm -hmm. to talk <laughs> so so yeah, guys, go get the book. Um, it's worth it. It's I couldn't put it down. It was really good. Uh, you know, I was raised Amish, but the Swartz and Truber Amish are, were quite a bit different than we are. Same beliefs, just different. They were much stricter, and it, it, I just found it very interesting in that aspect as well. So sex abuse, I think the best method to stop it is preventative, right? Um, that means fathers especially you, you are biblically responsible for protecting your family and you need to be on the same page as your wife, uh, watching your children, knowing where they're at and, and being aware of any changes in them. You know, maybe, maybe something, uh, you know, just be aware of anything that might be bothering them, something different. Uh, but, and have that talk with them while they're young, very important. You know, our mother, fortunately, uh, told us all as kids that if anybody touches us inappropriately that we need to go tell her or we need to go tell somebody, you know, an adult. And um, I never had to, but I'm thinking that if a child knows that they can go tell somebody, that gives them a door out, right? The perpetrators have a hold on these children and and, and these children think they did something wrong and they're bad, right? They're not going to go tell their parents unless they know that what happened to them is very bad than they might. So, you know, have that conversation with your kids, three, four, five years old. I had with our kids when they were, I think four and six, I, I told them anybody touches them in the private areas, they need to come tell us me or mom or an adult. And, you know, I just, just the other day I asked them, you know, do you guys remember when I told you that, what are you supposed to do? And they said, we, they rolled their eyes. <laughs> Uh, we have to come tell you, right? They're 11 and 13 now. So they think they still think it's stupid, but at least it's stuck with them, um, which is huge. Uh, so yeah, preventative, just take care of your kids, H educate them, education, 
you know that's that seems to be the problem in these amish communities is lack of education so anyway yep so lizzie has already shared a ton she will share even more in the next video uh, just be watching for that make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon hit all that way you get notified of the next video that i upload um, it is great content uh, stick around so that you can help so that you uh, are aware of what's going on we will see you next time